Friends, welcome to this daily devotion. I'm Pastor Mark, and I have the privilege of serving the United Methodist Church of the Frankfurt, Mokina, and New Lenox areas. I ask that you come to this time with an open heart and an open mind. Ready yourself that we may truly come into the presence of God and leave transformed as people living in abundant life. Friends, would you join me in an attitude of prayer and hear the invocation? Almighty God, you are the light and life of every soul and our only source of hope. Grant that in this time of worship we may experience your transforming power, preparing us for the ministry of the day. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Friends, as we approach Palm Sunday, our theme this week has been the wounds and sorrows of ministry. The wounds and sorrows of ministry. Our theme psalm is Psalm 56. We'll pick up in verse 8 today. You yourself have kept track of my misery. Put my tears into your bottle. Aren't they on your scroll already? Then my enemies will retreat when I cry out. I know this because God is mine. God, whose word I praise, the Lord, whose word I praise, I trust in God. I won't be afraid. What can anyone do to me? God bless the reading of the psalm. Again, that refrain, I trust in God. I won't be afraid. What can anybody do to me? I I just write that on your heart. (laughs) It's a good mantra uh, just to remind yourself, I'm trusting in God. I won't be afraid. What could anybody do to me compared to God? Nothing. But, but I like how, I like how he starts this. David says, you you've kept track of my ministry, my misery. You, you've put your, my tears in, in your bottle and, and they're on your scroll. And, and, and part of that's kind of like an attacking statement, um, but but part of it's this realization. It, it is a trust in God statement that God God cares. Like God God knows every tear. Like if God, as the scripture says, if God knows the number of hairs on your head, which there's all, well for some of us more than others, right? But <clears throat> but if if God knows every cell in your body, we all have cells. Do you not think God knows every tear you've shed? God knows every every long night, every crisis. God God knows like the the thing that we you know we we talk about like God God sees all and, and we have this like you know Santa Claus image of God he, he sees you when you're sleeping knows when you're awake as, as this threatening thing but <clears throat> the reality is it it's anything but threatening it's it's this reality that God, God know God's part of you. <laughs> God knows you better than you know yourself. Your true self is intertwined with God. Your true self is intertwined with God's grace. God's grace is active in working with your true self that was created itself by God. And so God knows every tear. God knows every anxiety. God knows every fear. God knows every time that things haven't been all right. God knows every secret that you've kept, every time you've hurt someone else, every time you've cupped something from the people you love. God knows it all. So don't hide it. Don't be ashamed. Come to God. I I love that reality. And some of us struggle with that because we think like we're getting away with things. My kids don't get away with things. Like, we know what's going on. We're not stupid. And we, like, they will get away with things at some point. <clears throat> not because we're not smart enough to know what they're doing, because we are going to give them opportunities to to be free and independent. And they're going to use that to try to get away with things when what we've tried to teach them is everything should be open and free. Like, there's... We're going to encourage you to be you. 
We're going to encourage you to grow and do good. And you're going to make mistakes and come to us. There's forgiveness. There's love. There's support. And that's what God is offering you. It's not a wagging finger. There might be lectures, you know, sometimes a lecture is good for all of us. Might be a reminder that you need to ask for forgiveness, that you need to make something better, that you need to turn your life around. I get it. But it's good things. Because God doesn't want you to suffer. God doesn't want you to hurt. God doesn't want you to be wounded or sorrowful. God wants you to live life and for your joy to be complete. Our anthology reading today, pick it up here, comes from The Living Reminder by Henry Nouwen. The minister, as a living memory of God's great deeds in history, is called to heal by reminding people of their wounded past and by connecting their wounds with the wounds of all humanity, redeeming by the suffering of God in Christ. But what are the implications of such a viewpoint for the personal life of the minister? The temptation is strong to ask, how? How do I become a living memory of God? How do I accept and connect? How do I lift up the individual story into divine history. These questions are temptations insofar as they avoid the more basic question, who am I as a living memory of God? The main question indeed is not a question of doing, it's a question of being. When we speak about minister as a living reminder of God, we are not speaking about a technical specialty, which can be mastered through the acquisition of a specific tools, techniques, skills, but about a way of being that embraces the totality of life, working and resting, eating and drinking, praying and playing, acting and waiting before any professional skill. We need a spirituality, a way of living in the spirit by which all we are and all we do becomes a form of reminding. One way to express this is to say that in order to be a living reminder of the Lord, we must walk in his presence as Abraham did. To walk in the presence of the Lord means to move forward in life in such a way that all our desires, thoughts, and actions are constantly guided by him. When we talk in the Lord's presence, everything we see, touch, hear, taste, reminds us of him. This is meant by a prayerful life. This is what is meant by a prayerful life. It is not a life in which we say many prayers. It's a life in which nothing, absolutely nothing, is done, said, or understood independently of him, who is the origin and purpose of our existence. Again, from The Living Reminder by Henry Nouwen. This this book is a guide to prayer for ministers and other servants. And and Henry is speaking about ministers. Um, He's a Roman Catholic priest. And and so he was a Roman Catholic priest, I believe. Yeah. Um, Why I'm okay sharing this and why I'm okay doing this is because I believe in the ministry of all people. I believe everyone's called to be ministers. And I believe what Henry is trying to offer is that reality that we're all called to be in ministry. Not by the skill set you have, not by the education, but by your life. Let your life be a testimony. And and that's when we talk about the, the kind of subjective theory of atonement. It's the example of Christ that transformed the world. Again, that's a piece of the puzzle. It's a piece of a much greater puzzle, in my opinion. Uh, And that's why I value all of the different theories of atonement kind of as a, as pieces of a large puzzle. Uh, it glimpses of a mystery. Maybe it's a better way to say that. And, and so he talks about prayer, and I believe that's that's so true. It's it's not prayer. A prayer life is not about the number of times you pray a day. It's not about um, uh, making sure that you're you're following a structure of prayer. It's and, and we have all that, and all that's good. Like you you got to train up yourself, right? Uh, you don't just go run a marathon. You got to train for it. And, and those structured prayers and, and that route, like all that trains us. But the goal, the goal is to pray without ceasing. The goal is to be connected to the source. And, and the goal of ministry is not 
not to acquire a skill set or, or acquire a, a great following or acquire acclamation or, or uh, just accomplishment after accomplishment. The goal is to live a life that shows God's love. I, I have this conversation with my oldest child um, who, who desperately wants to, to help others. He's got such a good heart for helping and, and, and hates when people are in pain. He's lived through so much pain in his life. He, he hates to see people in pain. And, and so he, he's quick to try to try to teach people about Christ. He, he's quick to try to, to encourage his friends. And, and that's good. And I, I don't ever want to take that away from him. But, but I, I also try to teach him that one of the best things you can do, especially, especially in, 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 in context and relationships that are not, not deep. And he's, he's such a, just a wild extrovert. He doesn't have a ton of deep relationships. And so, so it's our actions. It's our words that demonstrate God's love. Being a good friend demonstrates God's love. Sitting with someone in their misery, in their sadness, not trying to solve the problem, just being present, that shows God's love. And, and as you build that relationship, you can tell them that this is why I feel this way because of, of, of what I know about Jesus and what he did for me. And, and, and that's, that's how evangelism works. It, it doesn't start with saying, well, you got to know Jesus. It, it doesn't start with saying, you got to be saved. It starts by saying, I love you. And I'm going to show you that. And I care about you. And I'm going to show you that. And I value you. And I'm going to treat you with value. And then it leads to deeper. Why? <laughs> because I am also loved. And I am also cared for. And I am valued just as you are by the one who created all things. Friends, today we practice prayers of intercession, praying for others. And to do so, we use our simple five-finger prayer. And I'll put it on the screen for you so that in silence you can pray for those closest to you, those in authority, our leaders, those who are weak, and finally, and most importantly, yourself. Let us pray the prayer that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen.